now that we've added the core foundational stuff, it's time to actually get cracking. So we're going to add a web server now, a cPanel web server. Upmind supports a number of different hosting platforms. Uh, you can, I mean, there's a few for now. We, we keep adding more. Um, cPanel is a very popular option. So we're going to go ahead and add that. What I've done is I've just gone to a random provider and I've bought a super cheap uh, reseller hosting, very standard WHM reseller platform. Uh, let me load this in another tab. There, you can hopefully see that. So here I have a, uh, a brand new reseller account. You can see I've just created it on server.hostbilling.co.uk. There's nothing, nothing out of the ordinary there. Sorry, it's in a slightly different window. So what I want to do here is I want to go add new web server. So I'm going to call this web server, web server one. This is just a label that you might want to give it. Obviously right now we've just got one web server, but you could call it whatever you liked. Um, cPanel, these are default options. We're going to come to those later, further down the line. They really apply when you've got lots of different types of uh, types of servers or when you've got lots of different types of hosting accounts, things like that. So host name, excuse this uh, slight mess. So S561. Then my username is going to be my WHM username. You'll get this from your hosting provider. Server HO is the one I've got. Obviously, if you've run your own cPanel server and you've installed cPanel from scratch, this could be root. And then you would do the same thing, but you would be using root as the username there. The benefit of having your own web server is that you could provision reseller accounts. If you have a cPanel reseller account, you can't provision reseller accounts under it. API key, so we go to WHM, we go manage API tokens. Let's generate a token. We're going to call it Upmind. API token will not expire. We need to make sure we've got everything ticked here. It should tick it by default. Yes, I've saved. Okay. Here. Configuration. Again, these options really apply when you have more than one server. I'm going to add it in there now. So we can come back to it later. You don't need to fill these in. Accepting new accounts is, again, just something that allows us to specify if an account can be automatically provisioned to the server. I'm going to say yes. Create. Now, we've added a web server. So the next thing we need to do is add a web hosting package. So let's go to hosting packages. Let's go add new hosting package. We need to add a category. Let's call this uh, shared hosting. Don't worry about descriptions or anything for now. This is a single product, it's active, it's visible to clients. We're gonna call it package one, create. Product billing. This is gonna be a recurring product. We're gonna only offer it at $5 a month. All of this multi-currency side of things, I'm not going to cover in this hosting set of tutorials. You watch other videos on, on some of the other playlists if you want to look at how multi-currency works. I really want to stick to the hosting side of things here. Save. So that's saved. Now the key thing is we need to go down to provisioning. So in provisioning, this is web hosting. It's cPanel and web server one. Dynamic configuration is what we're gonna to come to later when you have multiple servers, but static to web server one. So create account is gonna create an account, that's fine. So the important thing we need to set up is we need to set up a package identifier. Package identifier is basically package name in WHM. So in WHM, let's go to packages. We need to create one. So we're gonna call this package one. I'm gonna set it to 500 megabytes, 50,000 gigs, and let's add. So edit a package. So bear in mind that the package name you create might be precursed with your username. So you see here it's server ho underscore package one. So now we have to go here and we go server ho package one. Just double check my spelling. 
here. Oh. Okay. Save. Now, my product should be set up and live. So as long as I've done it right, if I go to my host billing front end site, and I go place new order, should see shared hosting package one, add to basket, five pounds a month. Let's just add a random domain, add to basket, continue to check out, we'll pay later. That's my order complete. And now if I go into host billing, you'll see this has been ordered, my trigger my own fraud system. But this should now have placed an order. Now, because this invoice is unpaid, it won't have automatically created the service on the server, but let's go and add just a manual payment to this because I'm showing you. So that now marks it paid. And what that will have triggered about in the back end is the system now running a create command. So you can see if you go to this uh, tab here where you've got the server, the activity log shows information about what's happened and the manage tab shows the things that have happened on the provisioning layer. And you can see here, we've sent a dispatch command to create account. This can just take a couple of minutes depending on the server. And there we are, success, create account. If I go to login to control panel here, you can see I'm now logged into my new cPanel account. If here I'm logged in as the client, I'll go to products and services. I also have the ability to log into control panel and I'm logged in. And then if I toggle back to my WHM account, and I go to list accounts, you'll see here that my sub account has been created. So very simple, very straightforward. That's how you add a cPanel server to Upmine. It's how you create your first hosting package and it's how you accept orders.